What is legal epidemiology? Law matters to public health, and let's start by thinking about how big law is. When we talk about law, we're not just talking about statutes or court decisions, what you might call law in the books. We're talking about all those institutions, people, and practices through which law is enforced. So when you're out on the streets, the law is what the policeman says, or what the government bureaucrat says, or just what your peers think law is. These forms of law are all over the place, and they're influencing our behavior and our environments in countless ways all the time. The law is basically one of the biggest social intervention systems we have. After all, we pass law to influence behavior and change environments, and making behavior and environments safer is what public health is all about. In legal epidemiology, we look at three different kinds of public health laws. Interventional public health law is comprised of all sorts of laws that are being used explicitly and deliberately to influence behavior or the environment to make us healthier. For example, a law requiring people to wear safety belts, or a law that prohibits novice drivers from driving later than 11 p.m., or environmental protection laws that prevent the release of toxic substances into our air and water. Interventional public health law is law used to intervene and protect public health. A second category we're interested in is called infrastructural public health law, the law that sets the powers and duties and jurisdiction of health agencies and health systems. Some states, for example, have centralized most public health work in one statewide department. In others, the system is decentralized, and local health departments and boards of health take charge. These are variables that change from state to state, and they make a difference in how well those health departments function. So infrastructural health law is the study of how the basic powers and duties enshrined in law influence the performance of health departments to make a difference for our public health. The third and biggest category is what we call incidental public health law. Take civil rights law law that protects us from discrimination in the workplace because of our gender or our race or because of a disability. You can see that as just being about equality. But people who work in workplaces where they're respected, where stress levels are kept low, and where they have a chance to take control of their work seem to have better health outcomes than people in other kinds of workplaces. The fact is that workplace hierarchy, happiness, relationships, these turn out to be very important to people's long-term health. These laws aren't intended to protect public health, but incidentally, civil rights law has that effect. People working in legal epidemiology are epidemiologists, lawyers, economists, criminologists, sociologists, anthropologists, and psychologists. We're people who want to use the best of the scientific method to understand how law and legal practices influence public health. Our goal is to promote the use of law in an effective way to promote public health. Law can be an efficient, even cheap kind of intervention that has a powerful effect on behavior, environments, and health outcomes. When a law works, every state or city should have it. Of course, law can also do harm, and a law that just doesn't work is a waste of time, an annoyance, a pointless expense, and an unnecessary regulatory burden. Law doesn't always work, and when it doesn't, we shouldn't use it. But how do you know the difference? Through legal epidemiology. We measure the effects and side effects of law. We figure out what's working and what's not. And we translate our research data into useful information for policymakers and the public. We define legal epidemiology as the scientific study and deployment of law as a factor in the cause, distribution, and prevention of disease and injury in a population. This diagram depicts the dimensions of public health law that we're interested in. We start with the policymaking process. Through the creation of those laws, the implementation of those laws, the effects those laws may have on individual behavior or on environments, and finally to the question of what actual effect these laws have on the level and distribution of good health in the society. Legal epidemiology is based on the proposition that a country, a state, a city that pays attention to the facts, is going to make better decisions than one that doesn't. 
When we struggle with the question of how to improve health most effectively, most efficiently, we should know when law can help and when it can't. At the Center for Public Health Law Research, we do legal epidemiology. We teach legal epidemiology methods, and we promote the field and advance the cause of healthy public policy. We work with our partners, collaborators, and funders to make sure that when we learn something important about the law, it gets out into the public debate. We hope that you'll join us by doing legal epidemiology, by consuming legal epidemiology research results, by using legal epidemiology in your public policy advocacy and lawmaking efforts. Visit phlr.org to learn more about our free training and methods resources, our legal data, and our work to develop software tools that support legal epidemiology.